Peter, when you were... Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, church family. It's Wednesday night, June 22nd. I'm so glad you're here. And welcome to our midweek oasis Wednesday night service here at the Oakland Center for Spiritual <laughs> Living. Most of you already know, but if you're watching for the first time, my name is Paul Pursuti and I'll be your host tonight. And thank you for joining us. So people say, what is the Wednesday night service? Well, I'll tell you. And why do we call it Oasis? It's because it's a place where we can be together as a community to be spiritually refreshed between mm -hmm. Sundays. We present our Wednesday night services in the satsang style with the intention that these gatherings be informal, intimate, and rich. That's our intention for your experience tonight. Also tonight, um, Peter, I think you have a slide you can show beside me. This is kind of a new thing we're gonna do during the opening. Yep, tonight we continue recognizing pride. <laughs> this is the time to celebrate the diversity in our village, to expand our allyship with all LGBTQ people, and to enjoy the Wednesday speakers representing the LGBTQ community. So our theme for the year is Wonder Wonder Everywhere. And our monthly theme is Living Everyday Wonder with a focus on the body. So if you're joining us for the first time, either in person or watching the recording, you obviously found our homepage and our webpage. You look down in the lower left-hand corner, there's a place you can submit your email address and you can receive our Village News newsletter every week. Usually comes out on Thursdays and it tells you everything that's coming up in the week ahead with all the Zoom links or if it's in person or if it's both. Lots of great readings, information, messages. Um, really a nice thing to have it all in one place and it conveniently comes into your inbox. Uh, give me just a second here. Sorry, I lost my page. There we go. Um, if you are not already done it, done it. <laughs> take two. It's going to be one of those nights, folks. If you haven't already done it, please mute your camera and your microphone. Um, our Zoom team may have to do it for you. If you don't, um, this will improve the quality of the transmission. Also, stay tuned for our special and important announcements. Um, tonight, we'll be reading the New Minister's Covenant as a part of the ritual that we do on Sunday. We also do on Wednesdays, and we'll do that during the announcements. So it is my great pleasure that we start our program tonight. Peter, you can drop that slide when you're ready. Thank you, sir. Um, we have a very special person delivering our opening prayer. We don't do anything here at the center <laughs> without opening and closing with prayer. Um, <laughs> practitioner Emeritus Karen Peterson is leading our opening prayer tonight. So Karen, I call you forward and the floor is yours. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you so much, Paul, and everyone who's here. Um, yes, and I have my husband, Dennis, sitting next to me as well. Um, so the theme of the evening is the one body and it it brought to mind the song that we sing sometimes um i was going to sing it but now i don't know that i can um it's become with me be with me we're all a part of god's body stay with me and just be with the one and so we know that as we listen and enjoy and cogitate the message that we have, then we know that spirit is moving through this one body, the one body that we represent and the one body that all, that is all. And I give thanks for this wonderful expression of love tonight. <clears throat> this this uh, talk that is going to certainly enlighten me and I, I, ex I expect many of us. 
and that we are just so grateful for this opportunity to come together and to be in union in our own one bodies and hearing about the one body. I give thanks for God's expression through each one of us, and especially as we listen to this talk. I give thanks. I release my word into the universe. And so it is. Amen. And so it is. Thank you, Karen. Perfect. As always, as always. <laughs> Karen is a member of our ministry of prayer. They've been praying for us on Monday nights for many, many years, led by the fabulous practitioner, uh, Dorothy Mendez, a very close and intimate and dear friend of mine. I'm so glad she's on my side when I'm down here on earth. And and uh, we're so blessed to have all of these wonderful folks that uh, keep us in um, the high watch um, all week long. So thank you, Ministry of Prayer. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Dorothy, for your service. And Dodie. And Dodie and Luis and who else? Um, um, Jesse Pittman Joyce. and Joyce, Joyce Lamar, right? Mm -hmm. right? They, yes. they do great work for us and I'm so grateful. So with that in mind, we're ready to start um, with our speaker tonight. Um, it's Sam Lejean, and Sam has been coming to OCSL for about four years and consider him, considers himself a student of life. His learning style incorporates the power of consciousness and body function, doing, listening, seeing, hearing, feeling, and knowing. So he'll be speaking on the one body tonight. So Sam, I turn it over to you. The show is yours, sir. Thank you, Paul. Uh, it's uh, It's been a while since I've been coming to uh, a Midweek Oasis, and it's indeed an honor and a pleasure to be here with you all right here, right now. I would like to start off with a land acknowledgement. Uh, I acknowledge the unceded land of the Ohlone and Chochechneo people, who originally were first settlers of this land called Oakland. And uh, I also would like to thank uh, Paul again for, for the kind introduction. And it was Paul who lended me the concordance of the Signs of Mind book in preparation of tonight's talk, as well as the members of the AD team uh, uh, supporting the, tonight's presentation. I also would like to thank Constance for the invitation for me to speak tonight. And all of you who are in this call, right here, right now, and for those who will be listening on YouTube at some point, I value your choices as you could be doing a dozen other things tonight, but choose to be here. I would like to acknowledge OCSL and the gift of uh, Ernest Holmes' teachings, the foundation behind my presentation uh, this evening. And I also recognize the spiritual and uh, the thoughts uh, uh, which are perhaps similar or varying beliefs, thoughts, and awareness, spoken or unspoken, knowing that this container that we have tonight is meant to be the way it is unfolding. So when the topic of one body was given to me by Constance, uh, I immediately went to the science of mind and see what Ernest Holmes has to say about the body. And on page 373, he says, the body is a concrete manifestation existing in time and space for the purpose of furnishing a vehicle through which life may express itself. The physical universe is the body of God. It is the manifestation in form of the mind of God. It is that creation which, while it may have beginnings and ends, of itself neither begins nor ends. The manifestation of spirit is necessary if spirit is to come into self 
realization, hence the body. Now, when I migrated here to the U.S., I I, I had to adjust um, a lot of things uh, coming from uh, other developing country like the Philippines. And in my own personal and spiritual journey, I noticed that my immediate default was the narrative of being less than, born with a congenital um, uh, condition, I always felt that I was not good enough. I was not, uh, uh, I, I don't look the same as the other people here. I, I don't sweat. I may not be as athletic as the others. So there's that constant battle that I have deep within inside me. Um, and in, in social justice circles, they call this internalized oppression. This awareness uh, of being less than, I, for some reason, I knew that was my default. And in my own journey, in my own life, I knew that it did not serve me at all. As Carl Jung would say, the shadow which is hidden, repressed, and denied, which is my unconscious beliefs, all was stemmed from conditioning from, from the past from childhood experiences, from school, and even from church and family. So that was my default, that not good enough conditioning. Then the opposite of that shadow would be, what is the gold? The gold which is within me as uh, the, the being that I can claim as my own. I'm uh, reminded of the story of the golden Buddha from Thailand. In uh, 1757, the Burmese army was invading the country of Thailand and with the fear that the entire country would be completely annihilated, the Buddhist monks began covering the golden Buddha with plaster and painted it with inlaid bits of colored glass that it may look a little bit of value or no value to the invading army. So during the invasion, all the Buddhist monks were murdered, but a golden Buddha was left undiscovered. And in 1957, an entire monastery in Thailand was being relocated and some monks were moving a giant clay Buddha when one of them noticed a large crack on the clay. On closer investigation, he saw that there was a golden streak emanating from the crack. The monk started chiseling away the exterior clay until he revealed that the statue was in fact made of solely gold. This story uh, validates my awareness and what Ernest Holmes says about the being of the truth, absolute truth of the who's and who of who I am. And he even mentions that the highest mental practice is to listen to this inner voice and to declare its presence. The greater one's consciousness of this indwelling I am, the more fully a person will live. This will never lead to illusion, but will always lead to, re to reality. So that's about me. Now, the second part of my presentation is group participation, which is with you um, listeners and, and having a part of this uh, discussion tonight. So I'd like to invite you just to ground yourself. And if you may, you can close your eyes and, uh, or have a soft gaze and just notice what you're feeling right now. Perhaps the seat that you're sitting on, perhaps the air that uh, is around you and feeling that uh, sensation all over your body. Perhaps you notice your heart beating. 
maybe some slight aches and pains here and there. So it's an invitation for you to notice. There could be thoughts that could formulate in your minds as you hear my voice, just like the ebb and flow of water. They come and go. So I invite you to take a deep breath and notice, notice what you're feeling right now. And whenever you're ready, I invite you to open your eyes. This next part of my presentation is an exercise on awareness. I will be sharing a PowerPoint slide with 22 different photographs from the internet. And uh, as a disclaimer, this is not mine. And just uh, a warning that some photos may elicit some strong feelings. The intention of this exercise is to invite you to notice the impact on yourself the photographs of people in various situations and circumstances. The audio quality is uneven and you can turn down your volumes a bit if it becomes too much of a distraction. It's, uh, I believe it's a little chant uh, uh, with the audio quality that I tried to experiment with PowerPoint. Not very successful. As you look at each picture, I invite you to consider these questions, which I will post on the chat. And after the entire series of photos, we will separate into breakout rooms, and I invite you to discuss the questions with your partner. So these are the questions that you will, I invite you to think about. Which photo is easy or not too easy to look at? What judgments or feelings that may unfold? And what kind of feelings are they? And how is God, divine consciousness, spirit, or whatever term you may use, manifests, manifesting in each of these photographs? And there are a couple more questions I, I will post on the, on the chat. So I will now start sharing my screen for you to look at the PowerPoint.
All right, at this time, I would like to request uh, Peter, if you can. Hold on just a second. For anybody that joined us, um, try to unmute yourselves because I want to make sure there's not a muting issue that we've been experiencing. Um, Maureen, can you unmute yourself? on your end and Freya, Doug, if not, turn your camera on and, and say yes or no. No, okay, so I'm gonna start Is it asking. Is it I'm gonna send a note. Uh, Dorothy, no. Okay, I just sent you a note. Doug, I just sent you a note. Freya, I think you're unmuted. Um, Maureen, did that work for you? Ask to unmute. Ask to unmute. Yes. Okay. iPhone, I think that might be Grady. Who else? Okay. I got you coming. Here we go. You see a note that says ask to unmute. Are we, are we okay? Let me try Dorothy again. Dorothy. I just sent it. Do you see a note to unmute? There we go. It, it just it went away. I need it back. You got it. You got it. You're unmuted now. Okay. I. Oh, you're back on camera. Margo, I've sent it a couple of times to you. Do you have a sign that says press to unmute? The host is asking you to unmute. Yep, you're good. Sam, how about you? You all right? You're showing muted. Okay. Anybody else? Maureen again. You're okay. Yeah. Now I'm. Now I'm okay. Thank you. Okay. All right, Doug. You're okay. Before I hope it doesn't do that when we go in the rooms. Why does it keep doing that? <laughs> Okay. Okay. All right. I am. Thank I you. Think everybody's unmuted. Okay. Let's go, Peter, when you're ready. I am posting the question on the chat room. Good here, so hold on. And I think we're going to lose the questions once we go in the rooms. Yeah. That's true. Okay. So take a look at the questions. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna open the rooms. We'll be in the breakout room for eight minutes. That's right. Okay. Let's join a breakout room. This will
Okay. Uh oh. Did you get bumped out? What happened? I can't hear you. <laughs> I don't know. You were in a room and then you got bumped out of that room. I don't understand why. Uh, Let's see. I'll try moving you to another room. And for some reason you're not, is there a box coming up for you to join? Is there something that says, Accept? No? Uh, yeah, sorry. I, I don't know, that happens sometimes. And I don't, oh, wait, wait a minute. Here, maybe you can unmute, try unmuting yourself. Can you do that? Yeah, okay. Uh, it says you're unmuted, but you're not. <laughs> oh, well. Something's just not going right. It's good. They were good pictures. They're great. They're really, really great. Very powerful. I was trying to set up the rooms, but I did see a lot of them. Just nice to see the diversity. Yeah, yeah. You can chat with me. <laughs> Which photo is easier to look at? Now that one of the kid was hard to look at, that little baby. Hi, Jackie. Oh, you can't do the chat. Oh, wait a minute. Can you chat? Oh, okay. Jackie, we're in, they're in breakout rooms right now for about another two minutes. So I, I can't really put you in a room right now. So just you could look at the chat and see what the questions are, maybe, if you can hear me. Oh, Oprah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was a good one, too. Okay, let's see. 
Entonces. I can't respond to you. There we go. Right, welcome back. I realized that the time did not allow us to ancient, very significant discussions in my breakout room. So this is the time. I was leaving uh, that question in our breakout room. Where do I find God, spirit, or divine consciousness in all of these diverse situations, backgrounds, individuals, and that is what I would like to throw out in this, uh, to this community right here tonight. Any thoughts? Please be, feel free to share. Well, I, um, I want to say one, one brief thing and then maybe more, but, uh, definitely for me, uh, maybe this isn't paying attention to the body or whatever, but for me, the oneness that I have with other, with everything, people, animals, everything is, <laughs> is well, and, and humans, it's like in the heart centered. So I can feel a heart centered, a oneness heart to heart with people. And um, it, it's their behavior, you know, I'm just, it's like my own behavior. I have to like, forgive myself, <laughs> forgive myself and forgive them when they're not, people are not being kind or whatever. But I have to stick with that vision of being, of uh, connecting heart to heart in the, in the big mind rather than our tiny ego thoughts. Thank you, Freya. From what I'm learning from you is that heart connection that binds us regardless of our differences and behaviors. Thank you. Any other thoughts? Hi, Sam. It's Reverend Jerry. Hi. Um, I think how we ended, we had a really wonderful deep discussion about all of the different photos, but I think how our breakout room ended was that, you know, we are all here on purpose by divine purpose and regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the heartache or the beauty or the joy or the ease that we're all here serving in one capacity or another for the greater good. And even the baby that was very touching, that mm -hmm. was 
probably on life support of sorts. That little baby came here to do what God sent that baby here to do, and the baby was fulfilling that purpose. And so we're all here on purpose. Uh, what I'm learning from you, Reverend, is that absolute truth that there is a purpose. There is meaning. Yes. Mm -hmm. I may not be able to see it right now, but that is the absolute truth. Yes. That's the knowing part. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. True. Any yeah. others? Sam, this is Dorothy. Um, I didn't look at that the same way that Reverend Jerry did. First of all, the first picture of the African-American woman, I was disappointed in the over makeup that they had put her, making her look like a clown, as far as I was concerned. The second one about the baby told me that we as Americans are not doing enough medically to support our children who are in serious trouble health-wise. Then I saw the committee of the people who were behind bars, which told me that this ex-president named, well, I really don't want to call his name, but you know who I'm talking about, how he decided that people were not good enough to come to our country. I, I'm seeing this in a whole different light and I'm trying to see the oneness in there. But I also know that when God created us in the image and likeness of him, he also gave us choice. And in that choice, I am seeing that we as Americans had not made the right choices to bring us together as one, that we are created as one. And that's what I'd like us as Oakland Center Spiritual Living people to look at. We as one, what are we doing to create oneness in our community, in our surrounding community? And I'm complete. Thank you. You ended up your statement with a charge, um, uh, a challenge. Uh, what is oneness? What is one body, not only from an external point of view, but from a deeper sense of that oneness coming from the spirit, from the divine? Well, this is Karen, it's, it's, is that okay? Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Oh, what? Am I on? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, we talked a little bit um, about um, the di diversity of people in the United States. And I'm talking about really political diversity. And, um, and, and we even, and I even said just right at the very, very end about abortion. I mean, that's going to be a very, very potentially dis divisive. I mean, it already is, is in the works, a divisive situation in our country. And, um, and I, it, it's, I mean, as a, as a religious scientist, I have to accept that, that it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be easy. Um, a lot of people are going to be unhappy, um, and um, and you know what is the answer to that? And I don't know the answer, but the answer for me is, you know, hold the high watch. You know, pray for the pray for through some some way that this can work or not or whatever. I don't know, but anyway. So it's about trust. Spirit spirit knows, and I don't. So that's that's what it is for me. Uh, talking about that and you know political things and all, it, it's it's not doesn't doesn't it's not pretty in my view. Yeah. yeah. So I sense yeah. There's there's a lot of, of questions, uh, even feelings and emotions that come up with all these different, uh, and we're just talking about photographs here. <laughs> uh, so I invite us just take a deep breath and. Uh, just notice what, what, what's, what's in our body. 
what's in my body, what triggers me, or what soothes me. Mm. And, and the question for me is, knowing I have these choices, knowing what Dennis said, there is these sources of triggers, I can make a choice. What will I choose to practice and to cultivate? Margo is here. She's an expert gardener. She knows what things to cultivate. What are the components in the, the soil that would make a, a plant, a seed grow? And this is my own practice. You know, uh, I have all these different distractions. I have all these different sources of triggers, but what do I choose to cultivate? Where, which spaces do I choose to be in to cultivate that oneness, that one body, that uh, unity, what uh, uh, Dorothy is talking about. So it, it's a daily, for me, it's a daily practice, and it's a reminder the importance of spiritual mind treatment, affirmative prayer. But every Sunday, there's an invitation to talk and to speak to a practitioner and, and to, to make that awareness up front, up in the surface, um, to make that shift, to the, make that transition into that oneness of who's and who we are. How are we with time, Paul? That's six minutes if you want it. Any other thoughts from the group? Maybe I, I would ask this question. What is your own practice to cultivate oneness? Adelie, I'd like to hear from, from this community. Music and ice cream. <laughs> Perfect. I think I think prayer too. I mean, you know, I mean, what would it be without it? And the direction that comes from it sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm glad uh, Karen mentioned about prayer. Uh, we don't have the time, but we have that last question. If I were to have a spiritual mind treatment prayer to express, what would it be this week? What would be my SMT for this week? Something to think about. Any other final thoughts? Hi, this is Alice. Um, you know, for me, it's, it's the, the, the practice of just, just sinking into my oneness, knowing my oneness, and letting it, that speak through me. Um, and yeah, I think I'm losing whoever is talking. I'm, I'm okay. losing the audience. Alice. 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 Oh, yeah. Alice. That's awesome. Yeah, my, 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 my computer is not, not doing well, but it's just, you know, the, the, the oneness and our connection, but our connection, you know, our oneness with God. Um, and all the practices that help me remember that um, help me to um, deal with, um, you know, the situations of of our our human existence too. But but all of those oneness practices really help me. Can you give me an example, Alice, of your oneness practice? I, I, I'm pointing this question to you because we're buddies on the camera. Yeah. The camera. 
What, what, what's your oneness practice, Alice, that I can learn from you? Well, I, I like uh, um, affirmations, but I've also found that just short meditations work really well for me. You know, the silent meditations, just short silent meditations, um, really positive music that that gets gets my whole body in involved and happy and 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 just feeling my connection with everything around me you know I just kind of seek those things out um, because that for me helps um, center me in in my oneness with God it's it's like that. Um, oh, I know. There's, there's, there's this one, one song, and 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 the woman, she's going all over, and and she's she's getting nervous, and she's kind of afraid, and then her favorite song comes on, and then it's just, you know, she sees there's no difference. I'm, I'm fine. The world is fine. You know, it's, I you like know, that. everything's good. I'm connected with everything. You know, I may not know this situation, but I'm going to be okay. You know, so I just kind of keep looking for those kind of things for myself. I connect with you, Alice, from a heart level. Thank you for your sharing. Thank you. Any final thoughts as we, okay, Judith. I um, just actually it, it adds on to what Alice is saying. Thank you for saying that, Alice, because that's as I, I certainly get it enough as I go through life, I get things pointed out or they they show up and I maybe I watch TV when that's not a good idea. Uh, and and so I feel that I have a job to look for the good. And that's whether I see I someone, you know, I, I say hello to someone walking their dog and I tell them how beautiful their dog is. And, and I, or I see a couple of kids laughing with each other. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for it. I feel like that is my job and more and more I do it on a daily basis. I just keep tuned in because it's easy to see the opposite. The opposite, is very, the opposite is very available. And so, and, and when I look for it, you know, it's like, thank you, God, you know, for allowing that to come through my, my vision. That, so, yeah. And you thank mentioned, you. You, you, uh, from what I'm hearing from you, Judith, I'm learning that it's a choice to constantly practice in seeing that light of God in, in that person. In that in that person, in that, yes, yes, I'm looking for God in each of these situations. That would be my take home, one of the take home from you. Thank you, Judy. Yeah. Thank Susan you. Brecker has her hand up. Yeah, Susan, go ahead. Susan? Yes, I'm sending you an ask to unmute. There we go. I'm unmuted now. You're unmuted, I'm yes. I'm unmuted now. I asked everybody with speaking i was thinking to connect to my own oneness i have to look to see what eyes i'm seeing through am i seeing through the eyes of wholeness or am i seeing through the eyes of separation and one of the things that assists me in connecting in harmony with others is to remember that what eyes am i looking through am i looking through the eyes of god or am I looking through the eyes to separation? And taking the deep breath to remember that assists me when I'm looking. And all that makes me smile. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Can't, can't hear you. Sam, I can't, I can't yeah. hear you, Sam. Can't hear you, Sam. <laughs> I was just going to say on that note, let's all take a deep breath and just uh, cherish the words that 
Susan, Judith, Alice, and the others have shared and embraced the wholeness of, of us as being. And as what Zoe has mentioned on the chat, God is all there is. Yes, yes, absolutely. And Sam, thank you. Thank you for bringing this to us this Wednesday. It's a blessing and you're a blessing to us. Yes. Thank you. This, so, this was done so well. I mean, by you. <laughs> mm. Let's all take a deep breath. And as we shift gears, I will now give the time to Paul. So let's all thank Sam for coming forward, being willing to share tonight. We're looking at the body and I ain't so sure I want to look at mine, Sam, but that's okay. I'll look at yours. <laughs> oh my, just a little joke there because man, bring some oneness to these bags under my eyes, Sam, please <laughs> make them go away. Oh, what a great topic. Thank you for challenging us, Sam, to, to open our awareness. And I think that's what our mission here at the center is, is to transform um, how we think, because um, what we think drives us, and hopefully you're leaning towards the good side when you think, because that's what I try to do. So that's what I've learned, learned from the center. And I kind of learned from you tonight, Sam. So thank you so much. So let's show our appreciation to Sam, everybody, if we can, for bringing this idea in front of us. Um, got some announcements. I'd like you to, to consider who's coming and who'll be here with us. So if Mr. Peter can bring up the PowerPoint, we'll, we'll just get right through this real quick and easy. Um, this Sunday, June 26, practitioner and ministerial student, Teresa Gardner will be speaking also on the one body. So join us in person with meditation at 10 and the service at 1030. Uh, we're all also now streaming directly to YouTube and the link is on the homepage if you choose to watch this service from home. Next Wednesday, June 29th, practitioner Chantal Rolfing will bring a close to this month's theme of illuminating Pride Month. Chantal will be speaking on the body Meditation at 6.30 and service at 7. Wednesday night services will remain on Zoom. This Friday is Diversity Circle at 7 p.m. Naji Renee will be speaking on the topic of what is a pronoun? So <laughs> you can join this event. It's on Zoom and it's on the events page. That is intriguing to and think. Naji is a non uh, is a, a gender non-conforming trans identified person of color. Okay. Can you say that again, Doug? Sure. Naji is a gender non-conforming trans identified person of color. Wonderful. So I, I look forward to um, what you guys will be presenting on Friday night. It'll be great as always. So Friday night, 7 p.m. And on the events page is the Zoom link. Next is the Loving Stewards of Mother Earth Ministry. And they're bringing a very special workshop, Earth Prayers to Oakland Center. The class is Saturday, July 16th from 1 to 5. Now, why am I telling you about this so far out in advance? That's because registration will close on Saturday, July 2nd two weeks before the event so that they can order the materials that are needed for those that will be attending. So if you're interested in attending this wonderful workshop, please register for this event on the events page as soon as you can. You'll learn to capture the essence of what you see with a few strokes of ink, to be in conversation with the earth through asking and listening, and to take this practice with you wherever you go. The class cost is $90 and all materials are included. Calm will be meeting, not this Sunday, but a week from Sunday. 
on July 3rd at 12.30. This is both a Zoom and in-person event, and it'll be in Reverend Jerry's office. Please check out information for the calm meeting on the events page of the website. And next week, I'll have Zoe talk about it. And always, for information on all that is going on at the Oakland Center, visit our website. Be sure to check out our events page. And don't forget, you can follow us on Instagram, YouTube, and Facebook. So let's take a moment to, and follow along with me as, as I read the New Minister's Covenant. I'm going to ask you to, to just read along with me um, silently. The New Minister Sacred Covenant. So I breathe in deeply and release deeply. And I focus on the words. There is only one life. This life is good. This life is God. This life is my life now. In knowing that I am one with this life that is God, I therefore know that I am one with all of its blessed expressions, which includes the presence of a new minister for my beloved spiritual community. Because I know that the highest purpose of my new minister is to reveal spirit, I therefore know that my new minister is a revelation of God as wisdom. I further know that my new minister is the fulfillment of that which has been promised by spirit. For it is written, I am filled with divine wisdom. I allow divine mind to fill my mind now. As I stand in agreement with my beloved community, I see my new minister revealed before me as unity in the community. I now intend to experience my new minister in full cooperation and, and agreement with my community, knowing this truth about myself. For I am inspiring unity and diversity, embracing and nourishing our community. I am awakening the wisdom within. I am healing and expanding our community with the power of love. I am engaging the community in building a world that works for everyone, and I am de deepening family consciousness. As I now accept the highest expression of a new minister into my life, I know that they are revealed in a way that illumines spirit and serves the highest and greatest good for all who are touched by their presence. I am grateful God is gracious. And so it is, Ashe. And I release that into the universe knowing it does not return void. That is something I've learned recently from Dr. Dan and Dorothy and Dodie and Deborah and Dr. Judith and all those that are on Dr. Dan. It will not return void. So as I release that, I move into a, a moment of gratitude, thanking all of you for being here tonight. All of you that contribute I know you have an offering, whether it's time, treasure, or talent. So hold that special gift close to your heart and, and follow along with me with our affirmation. Joyously, I give with an attitude of abundance, knowing that as I give, I do receive, and so it is. So I pass the digital basket from cube to cube, receive your offering, knowing that it's deposited, and whatever you contribute, helps keep our center moving and doing all the right things. Um, with that in mind, there's several ways you can contribute financially. If that is what you're called to do so, you can visit our website and you can use the donate button for credit card or you can use that address there that is shown on the homepage just like that for mail. You can text it to 510 510-327-3431. Um, if you use Zelle, there's a, a, you can Zelle your donation to giving at oaklandcsl.org. And if you attend in person on Sunday with us, we have offering baskets that will receive your gift as well. I look forward to seeing you all next Wednesday and next Sunday um, on yeah. everything that's going on. A couple of quick things before we do the closing prayer. I want to thank Reverend Jerry for being here again. She comes and gives us that spiritual anchor. Hi, Jackie. Oh, I see you hiding in there. You can't hide from me. There you go. Glad you're here, darling. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Hi, sweetie. And I want to thank the Zoom team that worked so hard to make this go um, and work perfectly. 
and that's Peter up in Portland. He's our, our, our head man tonight and does a lot of things behind the scenes, keeps us up front and ready. Also, we've got Helene and Alice. Um, always Constance Chapman is, is supporting us um, before we meet and after we meet. And Zoe's always here. Just in case I need uh, someone to put a fire extinguisher on Paul and cool him down a little bit. He's standing there ready. So uh, thank you, Zoe, for all that you do for us. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over um, for our closing prayer. And that's going to be delivered by Sam tonight. He's going to close us out in prayer. So mm -hmm. let's just take a moment and listen to Sam. Thank you, Paul. So let's all take a deep breath. Uh, knowing that there is only one life, there is only one mind. That mind is God's mind. And I, Sam Ladion, I claim this oneness right here, right now. Because I know that in this presence, in this very moment, that hearts are being touched the people who showed up tonight or even in at some point, there will be seeds that are planted that will connect us to that oneness, that divine intention that keeps us striving towards that oneness through the lens of how God looks at one body and one mind. And I am thankful for this opportunity knowing that there are no coincidences that we all show up here for a divine purpose, meaning we may not be able to know it right now, but we claim this divine thread that runs through each and every one of us as we practice and cultivate this oneness within. I release my word into the ethers of the universe, knowing that it is already complete, and I let it go, and so it is. So it is. So it is.